Well, this right here should not really come as much of a surprise, given the fact that the uh, Talmudic Jewish lobby has proven time and time again to be a full-on enemy and hater of freedom of speech and freedom of expression. And the ironic thing about that is how they will resort to Nazi tactics to attack so-called anti-Semites. Because, you know, essentially the Nazis, they would censor, they would employ censorship against those they didn't like and against those they didn't agree with. No different. So they're going to fight censor, they're going to fight so-called Nazis, you know, and the problem is too is that the, like what they would call anti-Semitic or Nazi is pretty much anybody who would criticize Judaism as a religion, which is what I do. So I get lumped into that same category as well, even though I'm Slavic. And we were also victims of the Holocaust as well. Side issue, but this is on uh, Israel, Israel National News. At Munich Conference, Rabbi warns free speech is working against democracies. Chief Rabbi Gold Schmitz warns Munich Security Conference social media companies need to do more to stop radicalization. Um, isn't a democracy, isn't free speech a, a pillar of what they would call democracy? But then somehow it's against democracy. No, it's actually uh, dictatorships, communists and fascists that censor free speech and attack free speech. Plain and simple. But of course, they don't seem to get that. It says here on the article, Moscow Chief Rabbi uh, Pinchas, Pinchas, whatever, Goldsmith, President of the Conference of European Rabbis, hosted a high-level panel discussion on Friday at the Munich Security Conference titled Combating Hate Crime. Together with the Executive Vice President of the World Jewish Congress, Merim Sturm, the panel was chaired by Chief Rabbi Goldschmidt and focused on the dangers caused by social media, including rampant anti-Semitism, far-right extremism, and Islamophobia, all of which have found a new life online. Anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, far-right extremism. The problem is, is that this, these definitions are so broad to where anybody who criticizes Islam or Judaism is now called far-right, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic. I know, because I haven't called all that, and I criticize Islam and Judaism. Okay? It's weird. The problem is, the reason why I'm calling this out is because they will label anybody who uh, will criticize Judaism as being some kind of far-right neo-Nazi. Even though I'm Slavic. But continuing on in the article. A key agenda point addressed how social media channels spread messages faster and more efficiently than ever before, and that more needs to be done to regulate these channels. The speakers concluded that tech giants are failing to deal with forms of racist hatred and the dissemination of extremist views across their platform. Speaking at, to the Munich Security Conference, uh, Chief Rabbi Goldschmidt, whatever, uh, said, quote, the internet has created a vast arena in which those who hold a deep hatred towards religious groups, for instance, are able to share their view with others. More worryingly, worryingly, they use a variety of platforms such as instant messaging to share dangerous tactics in their attempt to attack both verbally and physically those who do not subscribe to their way of thinking or choice of lifestyle. The evidence is clear. Hate and prejudice is commonplace on social media. The Hale Synagogue in Yom, on Yom Kippur the, and the mosque attack in Christchurch, New Zealand are prime examples of digitally inspired attacks. But again, you see the kind of narrative to where uh, anybody who's so now essentially what what the the uh, undertone to all this is, is that if you criticize Judaism and Islam you're now somehow in cahoots with the synagogue with the synagogue shooter and the mosque shooter you know that's kind of the thing too and and you know this idea that somehow words lead to, to violence no you have a free will okay if you follow me and you go out and do something something violent against Muslims or Jews I'm not, I will not be held responsible for that if you're an adult you got a free will you're you're responsible for your own choices and and Criticizing Islam and Judaism is not in any way on par with going into a synagogue or a mosque and shooting up the place. But that seems to be the kind of subtle undertone that's constantly pushed. And again, the censorship of speech you don't like, that's exactly what the Nazis would do. So the Talmudic Jewish lobby is employing, uh, is employing Nazi tactics. It says in the article, Goldschmidt, Goldschmidt called on governments around the globe to regulate social media and to avoid its misuse. During the debate, many agreed that technology has, to a certain extent, broken democracy. Peter Newman, director of the International Center for the Study on Radicalization in King's College London, said that from a technical technological point, the view of free speech is working against democracies, and that hate speech in particular is a huge challenge for our democracies today. Um, no, free speech is what is a pillar of what they would call democracy. It's actually the dictatorships, like the Nazis or the communists, who would censor speech they don't like. It says, continuing on in the article, but see, notice how they just totally uh, revert, basically, essentially, totally reverse the narrative. 
is how Monarch Jewish Lobby does that quite a lot. To combat this problem, Professor or uh, Professor Doctor Michael Fried Friedman, whatever, lawyer and philosopher Katie, stop, Boa. Oh, stop it. Lawyer and philosopher uh, sorry, lawyer, philosopher and executive director for of Center for the Applied for Applied European Studies, sorry, pointed out that we must first discuss and understand when a hate when a hate crime begins and when it is necessary to respond. To counter this, the panel suggested co copying the example of the digital fight against the Islamic State. Here, major internet platforms join forces to remove online jihadism from forums and accounts internationally. Alex Samos, uh, Center for International Security and Corporation. Uh, CISAC, basically, Stanford University, and former chief security officer at Facebook, argued that although there is a broad government coalition against the Islamic State, there is no broad uh, alliance of states against right-wing extremism. He went further in saying that if an Islamist contribution is censored, nobody cares. If they censor right-wing extremist politicians, that leads to that leads to a problem because some of them are sitting in governments. Well, again, it's like, you know, they're kind of, they're lumping everybody in the same category to, as far-right extremists. So if you criticize Judaism, you're an anti-Semitic far-right extremist. That's the, that's the undertone they're pushing there. And again, we seem to ignore the fact that it's not it's not anti-democracy anti to try to, you know, uh, support free speech. It's actually the Nazis that would censor free speech. And again, continually, we see time and time again, the Talmudic Jewish lobby employing Nazi tactics because the Talmudic Jewish lobby has always been against freedom of speech plain and simple and they were against it in Jesus Christ's day too when he was rebuking their false religion of Judaism and they were trying to kill him over that plain and simple Judaism is false and satanic and if you think I'm anti-semitic for saying that well that just shows how you don't want to engage in any kind of real discussion on scripture so anyway may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren goodbye Thank you.